a warm welcome to your Barbados Today News Update. It's Monday, November 1. The Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association reports a positive response to the revised travel protocols. Fully vaccinated travelers to the island are no longer required to take a COVID-19 test or quarantine on arrival. Now, the grouping is hoping authorities will consider easing some more of the restrictions. Speaking on the one-on-one -on -one program produced by the Public Affairs Department last evening, BHTA Chairman Jeffrey Roach called for an extension to the curfew. So if the curfew is extended to maybe 11 midnight, then we believe that that relaxation would be fine for some of the visitors and certainly as well for the members. Because if you think about it, um, rest, standalone restaurants, for example, mm -hmm. right? Um, many restaurants under normal circumstances will close around 11, right? Um, this early closure means that they're less servings. Um, in addition to which, following the protocol requirements, there's been more spacing between the tables, etc. So when you layer all of that on top of each other, it severely impacts the economic um, viability for some of those businesses. The BHTA is also making a case for tourists who need to go into isolation to be able to do so at the hotels they've booked for their vacations. I think once we can finish off by dotting the eggs across the T's, um, we'll be even happier than we are now. Um, because at the end of the day, we've heard from members and it cuts across, I think, the, the, the range of accommodation members that we have from the luxury to the B-class properties where persons who might, on testing, turn up positive don't um, fancy the idea of having to quarantine at Harrison's Point or at the school, mm -hmm. you know. So there's been a discussion on how that can work with quarantine on property and um, based on our input you know we think it should be it should likely be accepted maybe tweaked a little bit but once we can get that put to bed and, and that's the issue we have finalizing some of these things in just under an hour prime minister mia motley will join world leaders addressing the opening ceremony of the world leaders summit at the united nations climate change conference she arrived in Glasgow, Scotland on Sunday for the talks described as the last chance for officials from about 200 countries to discuss how to cut emissions by 2030. Ahead of her departure, Motley said there's no denying that COP26 is a vital meeting for the survival of small island developing states. That is why in spite of the pandemic and in spite of everything else that's going on, COP26 is so vital a meeting because it requires us to summon the political will to be able to take decisions that will affect literally the lives of those people and those of us in particular who live on small island developing states. But we've also recognized that because we, the world has been so slow to act, that those living between the tropics of cancer, <coughs> tropics of cancer and Capricorn are now also affected. It is against that backdrop, therefore, that our voices will continue to be heard, that we will make the claims for justice and for moral morality to root the actions of country. The Prime Minister's comments came as she and British High Commissioner to Barbados planted two trees on the grounds of Elara Court as a precursor to COP26 on Friday. She added that Barbadians must also play their part in the battle against the climate crisis. We must become resilient. The world is facing shortages. We have to be able to start to take care of ourselves far more than we do. Every Bajan household should have a lime tree. Every Bajan household should have a breadfruit tree. Every Bajan household should have either a golden apple or a mango tree. Every Bajan household should have then some other kind of flowering trees. And if it In other news this Monday, the Payne's Bay Fish Market will reopen today as the country observes Blue Fest Week. Maritime Affairs and Blue Economy Minister Kurt Humphrey kick-started the week on Sunday at a church service held at the St. James Anglican Church. He made clear his ministry intends to strengthen the fisheries sector that is now facing multiple challenges. We found now that the oceans that you know, used to cater to us do not have the same amount of fish. We found that the coral reef is not as healthy as it used to be. Many of the fish are now at their maximum thermal capacity and by that I mean that the waters are as warm 
as would allow them to live. But yet we are having a conversation across the world about allowing the, the earth to heat by 1.5 degrees more than it is already. And so because of global warming, we could expect more loss of reef, we could expect more loss of fish, we could expect more sargasm seaweed, more frequent, more intense hurricanes. The world is changing. And so the, world, the way we must offer to manage this space is no different. He stressed that the country must be prepared to make changes to adapt to the new realities. So that when we see people now doing things along the ocean, when we see persons trying to re either reinforce the reef or reinforce the beach, some of the work will cause some disturbance in the beginning. And it looks very scary. And what are they doing to the ocean? What are they doing to the sand? But if we don't do these things now, the reality is that we're going to continuously expose more and more people. So there are changes that are coming. And now for the COVID-19 update, two deaths were recorded at the weekend as the island recorded 298 new cases on Sunday. A 69-year-old woman passed away at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital's Accident and Emergency Department on Friday, while an 81-year-old Barbadian woman succumbed to the illness at the Blackman and Gollop Isolation Facility on Sunday. They both were unvaccinated. The total number of deaths from COVID-19 is now 155. There are 808 people in isolation facilities and 5,296 in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, the Bahamian Health Minister, Dr. Michael Darville, says vaccinations will remain voluntary, but he serves notice that proof of vaccination could be considered for some events. We are now uh, in Cabinet uh, finalizing the two pieces of regulation under uh, the, the current uh, uh, Health Management Act, which will guide us on how we put new rules in place because we've made it very clear that on the 13th of November, the emergency orders would fall away and we would have to have legislation in place. Now, this has been brought up because there's some events that's coming to the country, uh, sporting events, and we know from other parts of the world, they can create a bubble. And so our team is looking on ways on how we can create a similar environment for these type of events. Uh, it's not completed, and uh, uh, we want to ensure that we do not hinder our tourism sector and our economic growth, but we want to ensure that the safety of every Bahamian is paramount. On the international front, leaders of the world's biggest economies made a compromise commitment on Sunday to reach carbon neutrality by or around mid-century as they wrapped up a G20 summit paving the way for the crucial COP26 conference in Scotland. More on this report from Euronews. Legend says that with a toss of a coin over the shoulder into Rome's Trevi Fountain, one is sure to make a return to the eternal city. Perhaps this fate lies ahead for some heads of state as they partook in the tradition on the final day of the latest G20 summit. The meeting of world leaders was headlined as a precursor to the UN's climate conference in Glasgow. One of the biggest successes from the summit, according to Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi, was the commitment to the phasing out of coal. So, what's the success of this summit? Well, G20 countries committed to keeping the 1.5 target within reach, with a series of immediate actions and medium-term commitments. We've decided to put coal behind us, starting with uh, the international public commitment to 
eliminate finance for the new unabated coal, that we, all this finance will stop by 2021. All eyes now turn to Glasgow where COP26 gets underway. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.